talk to you about step one, which was the knee bend. Step two was the knee turn. And now we're going to talk to you about step three, the swing itself. Okay? And what you want to make sure you do is when you make this swing, and we're going to talk about two different swings. We're going to talk about the linear swing, classic style, right through the ball to the opposite hand, and we're talking about the windshield swing. Okay? And we'll talk about ways to prevent injury to your hand. Because the biggest issue nowadays now is the tendonitis, which relates to the wrist and the back of your hand. And to me, I think what has happened is technology has advanced to the point with the strings, poly strings, really stiff rackets, really stiff frames, really powerful frames. They have exceeded the body's ability to withstand the impact. And uh, depending on what you, how bad it is for you, you may or may not need to change your racket. I actually think I might need to change my racket. This racket weighs about 330 grams. Um, I have to be very careful with the string tension and the type of strings I use and the back of my hand hurts if I play in four hours. It might be an age issue, but hopefully not. Anyway, so let's move on to step one. Step one was knee bend, get a good rotation. Step two is the unit turn. Now step three is when you drop the racket head here, you have to make sure you bring your racket to your target. It's a little high swing, classic. When you impart topspin, you want to make the topspin come up. You're hitting through the ball, up and over. You don't want to hit topspin like this. Okay? You want to hit topspin through the ball, up and over. Because then what you want is a driving spin. Now, I understand a lot of people like the Nadal swing, and they come up like this. And it's okay if you do the Nadal swing, but realize by doing the Nadal swing, you have to swing through the ball very quickly and make sure you go through and up. And that'll impart the spin. We'll come to that in a second. So, knee bend, knee turn, racket head down, make impact in front. You want to make impact in front of your front foot right here, and you want to make sure you go to the other hand. Now, this allows for a lot of variation. I like the elbow up, wrist in. I like to come here, I like to do like an uppercut. And I've been doing this uppercut because it's better on my wrist. I was doing the, the windshield, and the windshield is the classic, you make impact, and pull across your body. And the idea between pull across your body is it's a lot easier to pull across and speed the racket head up than pull through. You know? And it actually is easier. Like you, once you try it, you start making a crown deck and come across your body with the windshield. It's really easy to generate a lot of speed on the ball. However, the issue is the wrist. And when you do this swing across your body, you have to make sure you keep the L of your hand and you're using your entire arm to come across the side of the ball. Okay? I would prefer to hit, go from here, go through the shot here, and then follow through at the end. So after make impact, come up. I think like an uppercut, uppercut, and I come over the top with this to my shoulder. This makes sure that when I impact the ball, I'm coming up on the ball, I'm imparting spin through the shot, and what's going to happen, therefore, is that the ball accelerates to the target. It doesn't just go up. You don't want to continue to something like this, and then it dies out. So impact, you turn, knee bend, you turn, you impact, come through the shot, to your target. If you don't want to use your opposite hand, just make sure the hand clears out, over the shoulder, Okay? If you want windshield, you're allowed to windshield, but when you windshield, make sure you're using your entire arm, elbow, and wrist, and torso, so like this. Be sure that since you're doing this, that you can be very careful of your lower back. Make sure that you're doing exercises to stretch out your lower back before you play, and make sure you maintain the balance between your abs in the front, between your abs in the front, and your back in the back. Those muscles together, work together to form a strong core. If your hamstrings are tight, that will create a strain in the lower back, which will cause a problem in your just abs. Okay? So you have to make sure that you're flexible, you touch your toes, your hamstrings are tight, are loose, your abs are tight, and you have a strong core in order to treat you do soft like this. That's why I don't advocate on the kick serve to snap up anymore, because it causes cause a strain in your back. Okay? So what did we talk about? Step three, break it down, Impact, swing. You're gonna rotate into the shot right here. Rotate into the shot right here. Like you push against the wall. Bam! You hit the ball. Notice as I turn, right? You can see comes up from the legs. Knees are bent. Impact right here. And you have your hand go through your target. That is step three on the forehand. 
When you make impact, make sure you come up into a shot. And you'll see, when Burgess is hitting that shot, he stays down to the shot, he makes impact, and it's almost like he's throwing his racket at his target. You want to have that racket hit accelerate to your target. There are three ways to hit your forehand really big. The first way is transfer weight to the ball. The second way is accelerate the racket hit through the shot. And the third way is follow through to the ball. You pretend that you hit three balls in a row. So hopefully, follow step one, two, and three, that will help you hit a better.